Hope you're doing good. Mike, get back with another video. Back here to talk about the Pixel 8a June feature drop update that finally landed on basically Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile devices. Specifically T-Mobile here. In my case, it took them forever. I don't know what the issue was. I'm sorry my screen's a little bit dirty. Let me go ahead and clean that real quick. I do have a rag here. Yeah, sometimes T-Mobile just falls behind when it comes to these updates, but I am glad that they did. Nonetheless, finally fixed that and addressed that. Now that we kind of cleaned the screen off a little bit, and I do have a screen protector on, so this one's just being a little persistent. Maybe if I took the case off, I could probably clean it a lot better. And as you see, the fingerprint sensor, pretty responsive with the film protector on and post-update. Updating this device, the update came in just under 900 megabytes, 893 to be exact, which is a pretty decent size update. You know, it's not just addressing security issues, it's actually adding features. And the first feature that I really want to talk about is find my device. So that now the device is still able to be located despite being dead. Now, of course, I can't show you that <laughs> with my Pixel because A, I have plenty of battery life, but then B, I would need to have another device with find my with the find my network in order to locate this device so that's pretty nice it's it's good to see that they included that here with the pixel with the pixels because no doubt our phones will die on us and we need to be able to locate them and find them so shout out to google for being able to add that feature there i also would like to highlight gemini nano is now on board now how do you actually find gemini nano and activate it well we're going to go into settings and then I'm gonna just search for it. But really first, you need to have your developer options activated. And how do you develop, uh, activate your developer options? Well, you're going to come into about phone. So you're gonna come down here to about phone. Then you're gonna to go to software information or essentially down at the bottom where you see build number. You wanna tap on that seven times. Then it's going to tell you and count down for you until you finally activate developer options. Once you actually activate developer options, then you'll find this option. So in developer options, you're gonna scroll down until we see AI core settings. And once we find AI core settings, we're going to click on that because this is what's going to help us activate Gemini Nano. And then we will explain what it is. So here we go right here. AI core enable on device gen AI features Gemini AI or Gemini Nano features that will run through AI core using Gemini. So this is a feature now that Google has added to the Pixel devices to, and Samsung devices too, really for that matter, that allows Gemini to run on device, meaning it does not have to pull a lot of resources from online servers. It's able to do a lot of that computing right there on your device. And that's really good because some people are a bit skeptical about online servers and data having to be transferred in that way when it comes to computing some of these new AI features we're getting through Gemini and for that matter Apple intelligence so now Google has Gemini Nano which runs on device to be able to do a lot of that AI computing number crunching for you on device and that's pretty much all you all have to do once you enable that and with this update it should in the background like download uh, and I, I guess it's a big file or big uh, database that it ends up downloading in the background. So then that way it can enact those features. So it's nice to see that they have these new ways of being able to use AI on device. Me, I'm not necessarily skeptical. I don't mind the online processing, but to have that on device offline computing very, very well indeed. Another feature that Google added was or is the ability to essentially mirror your screen or share your phone screen with a bigger screen such as a tv or a big monitor and all you have to do is use a usb-c connection or usb connection and of course at least one end of it will be usb-c as we see here with the pixel 8a you're able to now screen mirror via usb connection with the pixel devices i find that to be pretty cool and pretty handy because you never know when you want to share and reveal photos and videos of friends and family at a gathering at a party at a at an event or maybe for work and you're using a pixel device you need to show some of your work on a bigger screen you have that option now with the google pixel 8a referencing back to gemini nano or gemini in general and machine learning google also improved the facial detection uh, and optimized those device if you will 
uh, features and software computational abilities so that in that way those features such as gen ai and you know best take right <laughs> and I, what's the other one top shot i believe that's that's still on the, on the pixel devices those work that much more better because now that the phones or the device is able to read and better understand what's on the screen what's in your photos app it will be able to better determine great facial expressions for best take uh, for top shot and be able to give you exactly what you need on device and this leads me to another feature that they improved and it's within the recorder app the recorder app now allows itself with improved optimization and AI machine learning it now can record multiple people or speakers and label them and transcribe them so I don't know here's the one thing I don't know about that Let's say I hit record. Do I do if they announce each other's names? Will it then kind of know to label them by name, or does it just label speaker one, speaker two, speaker three? You know, he said, she said, and then you in post can actually go in and change and edit it so that way you know who was saying what based off of your own vocal recognition of the speakers. And the transcription is also very important because along with being able to record those speeches being able to transcribe it and actually see it firsthand also works because maybe you can't listen to it in a specific you know environment or setting or maybe you need to clarify certain words or certain phrases that were said maybe you're using it for studying so you have it recorded but you want to go back and read it later it's so good that transcription is becoming a big part of our devices whether it is a pixel device an iphone a samsung device our computing devices are getting much more sophisticated to be able to transcribe just about anything that is being said around said device. So those are the big features that were dropped with the June feature drop for the Pixel 8a and the Pixels in general. And it's good to see those updates come. There was updates for the Pixel Watch as well, the Pixel Watch and Pixel Watch 2, but I don't have one, so I'm not going to talk about them. So let me know down in the comment section below, have you guys updated your pixel 8a yet have you received it how has it been faring for you the one thing i've noticed is in terms of battery life so far because i've been rocking it for what about a day or two now it's so good to see that battery life has stabilized even more battery life was already decent on here De like decent to to good because this this tensor g3 chip i think is uh it's a mediocre chip in my opinion i don't think it's that great and this update seems to have addressed two issues with the chip, mainly battery drain, uh, to, to some degree battery drain with this device, and overheating. So I use this vice, device between this and my Galaxy S24 Plus to connect to YouTube on my TV. And I've had a couple of days where just connected to the TV, not doing anything else with this device, this sucker would get hot and it would confuse me and it would actually drain crazy fast. And... Since having this update yesterday, I've noticed that standby time has dramatically improved so far, despite having this downloaded yesterday. And I've also noticed that it does not get hot to the touch like that, which is also something that we needed to see. So I'm glad that they've addressed the battery life in the, in the G3 chip. I can't wait to see what the G4 and or G5 represents for the pixel devices because i think it would be a huge step in the right direction and away from the g3 tensor chip it's always interesting because when it comes to these chips it always seems like they find a way to have a chip that's just crazy overheat you know leaning it, 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 the chip wants to overheat and or it has some laggy problems we had like this what was it the snapdragon a10 that did that back in the day right uh, so it's interesting when you think about some of these chips that we've had where I think even the 8 Gen 2 or the 8, 8 Gen, well, one of them also had some problems when it came to overheating before all the companies switched over to their own proprietary chip. So it's good to see that that was addressed with this update. And we know that over uh, throughout the, the last couple updates, they've been changing their font for the Google weather. So if you guys haven't really paid attention, you see it's got a lot more 3D look effect to it. Kind of looks more of like a classic look as opposed, not Class C, classic like you know first generation type smartphone font so or at least uh, animations or uh, pictures images the font doesn't really bother me but it's very interesting to see 
how the actual images look almost outdated now. So I don't I don't know why they're doing that. You see it's stupid hot here in uh, Warren Roberts, Georgia, just unnecessarily hot. So and then you just saw that transition was very smooth. So shout out to, to Google for really addressing this phone and being able to keep it in line, in step with the other two Pixel devices. And it's a great pickup. I highly recommend this phone, especially after this June feature drop update, this June security patch update, because it was a much needed update that I think really stabilized this phone a whole lot better since being released last month in May. So again, let me know your comments down in the section below whether or not you have a Pixel device. Do you, are you thinking about buying a Pixel device? Did you update your phone? The comment section is over for discussion. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure to ignite the like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, so all free that way it's my videos. So you and I can sit back check see who's cracking. And don't forget to hit that like and dislike button. <laughs> don't forget to hit the super thanks button by the like and dislike button. Cash app and PayPal. And check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's a way to keep tech fresh and live on this channel. Jermaine and Micah signing out until the next video. Wait for it.